Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tamiko Brown Nagan, Dean of the Harvard Radcliffe Institute, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the biennial Rama S. Mehta Lecture. Presented this year in collaboration with the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies at Harvard. We're grateful for that partnership, and I'm very glad to welcome staff, fellows, and faculty from the Rockefeller Center who are with us today. Before I introduce today's program, allow me to offer some words of thanks. The Rama S. Mehta Lecture centers topics related to, quote, developing countries, and it was established in Rama Mehta's memory by Catherine Atwater Galbraith, John Kenneth Galbraith, and the Mehta family. The lecture is supported by the Harvard Radcliffe Class of 1973, through the Benazir Bhutto Leadership Program of the Class Act Initiative. And I'm so pleased that its co-founder and chair, Marion Dry, is here this afternoon. Welcome. I'm grateful for their support, which over time has enabled us to welcome remarkable women in public affairs, the sciences, and the arts to Radcliffe. And as ever, I want to thank the members of the Radcliffe Institute Leadership Society and all our annual donors. Your generosity keeps Radcliffe programming free and open to the public, and we thank you. For this year's Meta Lecture, we're honored to hear from Elisa Lancon Antileo, the distinguished Mapuche linguist, indigenous rights and language activist, and the first president of the Chilean Constitutional Convention. Following mass protests in 2019 calling for political and social change, nearly 80% of voters in 2020 supported rewriting Chile's constitution, which had been enacted during the Pinochet dictatorship. In a subsequent vote, Chileans elected 155 delegates to take up that important task. The Constitutional Convention itself was notable in many ways, including mandatory gender parity among delegates, significant representation by political independents not affiliated with any party, and 17 seats reserved for indigenous representatives. By contrast, the 1980 Constitution did not even mention indigenous peoples. The convention was sweeping in its scope, considering questions of gender equality, indigenous rights, and climate change. And it garnered national debate as well as international attention. For instance, the New York Times described the global significance of the process, writing, quote, the questions facing this convention aren't Chile's alone. The world faces the same reckoning as it confronts climate change and biodiversity loss amid widening social inequities. After a year of work, the convention presented its draft constitution in July of 2022. The document's 388 articles proposed expansive reforms and enshrined over 100 rights, including rights to education, and to housing. It required that women hold at least 50% of positions in public institutions and addressed indigenous rights by defining Chile as a plurinational state. It also designated climate change mitigation a government responsibility and contained ecological provisions such as explicit protections for glaciers and recognition of rights of nature, among other innovations. When the new constitution was put to a national vote last September, Chileans ultimately rejected it. For now, the 1980 constitution remains in place and Chile is pursuing a new process for drafting its replacement. Nevertheless, the constitutional convention made important contributions to the ongoing work of charting Chile's future. As Chile, indeed the world, continues to reflect on the lessons of the convention, we have the opportunity today to learn from a leader of that historic process. 
Elisa Loncon Antileo was an elected representative of the Mapuche people, Chile's largest indigenous group, and she was voted the convention's first president in July of 2021. In addition to her leadership in Chile's constitutional reform process, Elisa is a professor in the Department of Education at the University of Santiago de Chile and is affiliated with the Center for Indigenous and Intercultural Studies of the Pontifical Catholic University of Chile. She holds two PhDs, one in humanities from the University of Leiden and a second in literature from the Pontifical Catholic University of Chile. In her academic work, Elisa studies the teaching of the Mapuche language. Her activism for indigenous rights has included recovering and preserving the language, which Elisa describes as foundational to Mapuche traditions, culture, and identity. Language, she's explained, is a matter of human rights. In recognition of her work, the Basque government awarded Elisa the Rene Casson Human Rights Award in 2021. That same year, Time Magazine named her one of its 100 most influential people. And the Financial Times named her one of the 25 most influential women. I'll welcome Elisa to the stage in just a moment, but first let me introduce Emil Kame, who will join Elisa in conversation following her remarks. Emil is an indigenous Quiche Maya scholar and activist, a professor in the Department of English at Emory University, and a current Radcliffe Fellow. His publications include the book Maya Nationalisms and Postcolonial Challenges in Guatemala and the award-winning monograph, La, La Maya Katsik, or Maya Word, Politics of Resistance in Guatemala. At Radcliffe, Emil is working on a book exploring indigenous struggles for self-determination throughout the Abiyala, which is an indigenous ancestral name of the Americas. Thank you, Emil, for being here today. After Elisa and Emil's discussion will turn to audience questions. Whether you're watching in person or with us, whether you're with us in person or watching online, you can submit questions at any time using the Slido link that's provided on the screen behind me and posted in the chat feature of the Zoom webinar. And now, please join me in warmly welcoming Elisa Loncon Antileo to the stage. Mari Mari, Compuche Tamle Palut Fachi Chawinmeu, Inche Mapuchenien, Mapuzungun Pingini Kewen, Femuta Inche Fei Pikenta, Chumushi Nipo Yengen, Chumushi Tanipo Yeken Tanipuche. Le saludo en mi lengua. Um, I say hello in my mother tongue, which is called Mapuzungun is the best way how to express my deep feeling uh, for you. Also, I want to say thanks to the organizer of the activity, to say thanks to the dean, Tomiko Brown Nang. Also, say thank you to Rebecca and all of the team that helped her to stay here today. Also, thank you to Emil, uh, a friend, Maya friend, that I have uh, the opportunity to meet him again here. Oh, I will show you some slides in order to understand uh, using uh, some pictures about what is the uh, topic that I'm going to talk to you today. As you see in that picture, uh, those are 
ladies from my community, which is called Ketawe, uh, the lady that is in the middle, she is my grandma. Uh, we, we distinguish ourselves because you use the cherry lonco. Um, so I am still keep my cherry lonco uh, in the picture uh, beside. Uh, when I was the, pres the, the president of the convention. You see Chile is a, the country that you see in red there. And in the middle of Chile, there is a small place uh, where the Mapuche people live today. We lost the 95 percentage of our Aboriginal land because of the military occupation of our territory, at the beginning from the conquest, Spaniard conquest, and then by the Chilean state. I show you that picture because speak about our cosmology. We identify inside the earth two, two, four lands the sky for, for us is a land. This space also is one land. And then uh, where we are, where, where we have your, our house also is the land and underground for land. And I show you uh, a year there because uh, from the beginning uh, in my uh, culture, uh, people told me that at the beginning, the woman uh, organized the life inside of our earth. Uh, it was an elder woman that uh, then she sent that girl, and after that girl, uh, she sent a man and gave us a, a role here. Uh, they said that we are here in this earth because we have to take care of ourselves women and man, men, and also take care for the nature. This is our role, why we are Mapuche. And we are still uh, uh, practicing that role because we have our ceremony. In that ceremony, we say thanks for the nature, thanks for our creators, and we also reinforce our relationship inside the community and with the nature. I showed you there uh, our, uh, how as map of philosophy and the paradigm of uh, Mapuche knowledge. We, uh, we, said, we say that we as indigenous, we have philosophy like other, like other civilization, the philosophy not only the uh, Greek, uh, it come from the Greece, also not only for, from the Europe, also we have philosopher in our country. So uh, our philosophy, we call it Azmapu, that's uh, the philosophy to have a good living here. And to have good living, we have to be in balance inside the community, and with the nature. You see four stage there. Uh, we recognize uh, Asmonian. Inside the Asmonian, there are values, principles, knowledge. Then we have uh, Normonian. Normonian uh, is connected with the roles of the people, um, how, to, how to organize li uh, life and also how the nature organized the life. Then we have uh, uh, Normonian, um, Itrophil Monien. Uh, we distinguish, distinguish Itrophil Monien because we say all, everything that is inside the earth, all of them belong to the life. All of them have a spirit. We recognize human being also known human beings inside the nature. And those are spirit and they are connected with us. 
And they are not from, from, f far from the people because some of them are inside of us, like water, for instance. And if we recognize those, we can have a good living. Que me buen vivir in Spanish, also the buen vivir, other indigenous culture recognize the buen vivir. Uh, in the flower, uh, show you the different, it's a flower with uh, a 10 uh, different petals, and each petal recognize how we uh, built the knowledge. Um, the knowledge uh, started in, it's a collective, started inside the family, inside the community, then the knowledge, we can find it inside the nature, recognizing human and non-human beings. And then we also have the scientific method to, uh, for the researching where we observe the nature and we make change. But we include also uh, the heart because we, we have uh, to learn by heart as in English, we have the expression to learn by heart. Inside our world culture, we also have it. Uh, you learn when you love that, that thing that you are learning. Uh, also, we include dreams. Dreams is a way out to get spiritual knowledge and also is the way out to get something from the future. So, um, a wisdom in my culture must be understand those way out to build the knowledge, respect the nature. Uh, and we are different from the scientific person because um, indigenous wisdom respect the nature, not destroy the nature. So um, when, when the, we live a very a strong movement in order to change the uh, constitution, Pinochet constitution, in 19, uh, 2019, and inside the city in Santiago, uh, non-indigenous and indigenous people mobilized using our language. For the first time, we can find our language inside the street in Santiago. It never happened. Um, before that time. So you see, you see there, we two wear is an instrument that use people to throw a stone. And they appear also, peñi, peñi, that means uh, brother, is the, the language from the man. Because the woman, we say la mien, we, don't, we cannot say peñi to say uh, brother. Um, there also, Newen uh, Kimelfe, Newen is a force, force, and Kimelfe is a teacher, uh, a force for my teacher, thing like that. So that uh, uh, appeared in our street at that time. Uh, this uh, picture show you when uh, I became the president of the convention. Uh, the man, he is Jaime Baza. Uh, the vice uh, president, we were together, and he was a very um, uh, a good uh, non-indigenous person that uh, that understand our uh, our demands, and we were working together all the time. Um, you see there the uh, a paragraph of uh, how we initiate the our uh, proposal of a new constitution and recognizing the plurality of the society and we democratic, in using the democracy, we, we work and we build that proposal. Um, today, uh, we are in the new process of uh, constitutional process, um, the right uh, parties is uh, working and also defined uh, all of the t uh, topic and unfortunately they 
they didn't include us. You see, those persons, there is nothing, nobody of them are Mapuche indigenous, so they are excluded indigenous people. And that is not good, that is not democratic, um, but they are doing uh, uh, according with their principles. So um, that uh, appeared the four Mapuche women, uh, both, all of us were elected democratically to, to write to, in the first process, constitutional process. Uh, there is the Mashi, the medicine person, uh, Francisca Linconao. Uh, there is also uh, Natividad Yanquileo, uh, Rosa Catileo, and me. Uh, we were very strong inside the discussion as Mapuche women, and also we, we had a, uh, we were uh, um, different country, different people from different nations. So one thing for me that is important to, to tell you that in this process, um, all of the Chilean movement, we were together the women, the people from the region, indigenous people, and we, we make a, an accord to uh, rights, the social rights inside the constitution because the Pinochet constitution uh, is, doesn't include uh, social rights. Uh, also, we include indigenous rights uh, nature rights, uh, women rights. But um, one thing important for, for, for the discussion at the, in, inside the, the convention was the world view of indigenous people. Because today uh, we are clear that the Chilean society must um, uh, interchange with the indigenous uh, people the power because all of us we are subject of power is the power of democracy is not only for white people democracy is not only for man democracy is for all of us so um, we we work together and we we uh, wrote a new constitution uh, including all of our rights uh, for the first time in the in Chilean history. Um, for, for us, it was very important to, to talk about uh, our philosophy, to recognize Mother Earth rights, the river have rights. Uh, also because in Chile, we, the water is a private uh, good. Uh, it's not free, f uh, water is not free for, the per for people. And today uh, we have a um, forestry industry um, plantation of pino, um, and we are in a very uh, difficult situation because community, indigenous community or uh, farmer community, they don't have water to drink uh, water for farming. Where is the water? The water is in the miners, it's in the uh, big uh, company of agricultural company uh, to, for avocado, for wine, and, but people don't have water to, to drink. Um, education is not um, right today. We have to pay the education for the young people. I work in the university and I know how my students, uh, they have a, a lot of efforts to get their degree because of uh, money. Um, the neoliberal uh, economy uh, privatized uh, all of the social rights. Um, in, also, in, in that process, the, the one point, very important point, uh, as, as uh, the indigenous uh, point, 
is the women rights, women rights, uh, the priority, uh, the equal relationship between men and women. It was very uh, for us, for this, for this society. It, it is very important in order to to avoid the patriarchalism. The the patriarchy is a very uh, hard for for the society and we cannot have good living because the women uh, uh, the system political system uh, doesn't respect uh, human right, uh, human right of women um, the the other point um, for us that that constitution the, the the proposal that we did um, uh, give us uh, a new face for the Chilean society. Because it was for the first time uh, the women, the indigenous, decided the society that we want to live. Um, and that, is, that was great. We understand that it will be possible to have an democ inclusive democracy. Um, uh, and also uh, including the right of the of, of the nature, um, the the um, the proposal of the new constitution was rejected, unfortunately. But the um, the what happened uh, is uh, is a little bit hard for the popul uh, uh, indigenous population because um, the, the people in the power, especially people that control the economy, um, use the media. We don't have a popular media, public media in Chile. There is no public media. The owner of the media, uh, there are two owners uh, of the media, and that people belong to the people in the power that support the neoliberal economy. One of them is uh, the Mercurio. You have to know that the Mercurio is a, is a very company, uh, and the Mercurio is uh, looking for me because today I have a sabbatic time, and they, they cannot accept that I, I have a sabbatic time. And this is my right as, as academic, but they are always asking me information, what I'm doing, what I'm working, um, so, but uh, we have a small, we have a law in Chile that you are, you, you can give the information if you want. If you don't want to give that information, if to consider that information that will be bad uh, for you, you, can, you cannot give it. So I cannot give them because they are doing that not because of transparency, uh, transparency um, I know that they are doing that because they are not agree with me. So uh, that is very uh, hard for all of the people that uh, join that first process. So um, they use the media and make a campaign, fear campaign, um, or fear campaign, or hate campaign, and misunderstanding campaign. Uh, destroy the speech or the constitutional speech and they said the indigenous people will divide Chile. We never say that, but they, the campaign said that. Also they said that people uh, cannot have their own house or uh, making line. So um, the, most of the Chilean people fear about that and reject the constitution and go against their own values, their, against their own rights. So that is very difficult. What is, what is going on today? Um, there is a, a second process. The government, uh, President Gabriel Boric, called for the second process and asked the, the rights uh, parties uh, declare themselves winners, but the rejection is was not because they are following the right party. There are very multifactorial reasons why they rejected. 
Uh, also, there are some people that belong to the Protestant church, and the, prote the, the chief of the Protestant church called to all of the people to reject the new constitution because of abortion. But uh, abortion is not inside our proposal. Those, all of those uh, reasons was belong to the lie campaign. So um, uh, today, the right people, the people from the right, and also the the people that belong to the political power in Chile, uh, feel that they have uh, the, the the power to ex exclude uh, regions, to exclude indigenous people. And they said that is um, we, we they are going to uh, write again a new constitution without the plurinationality, without the right that we claim in the first step. I think that is a big error because the democracy, all of us uh, uh, are called to to give. Um, opinion for the for the democracy. We don't. The exclusion is not good. Um, inside the democracy, we have a different position, but we need to uh, include all of them. And this process must include the indigenous and must include the plurinationalities because uh, we are two. We are real. Um, we are, we have, for a lot of century, we have, have been in Chile, uh, living in Chile, and they cannot deny us uh, for, by, by constitution, by ideology. Um, so, um, I don't know, uh, but they, still, they say that they, they don't want to include indigenous, they don't want to include uh, um, uh, plurinationality and also some liberal value uh, or uh, neoliberal value. They, they they will keep those values like uh, the the privatization of water. So uh, we learn in this process. We learn. Uh, we have a lot of uh, learning uh, situation and uh, topic. And what we learn is to, we need to, as indigenous people, all of us, we claim for the same objective. But inside of our movement, there are uh, more radical indigenous people that uh, didn't support the constitution, and they also uh, call for refuse our proposal. So we need to share the objective of one struggle, but also we need to share the same strategy. And indigenous people, we are uh, prepared to, to, to talk, we are prepared to have dialogue with the differences and make uh, agreement inside. I believe that, and for us, this was the strategy, but not all the indigenous people share the same strategies. Um, inside the political parties, uh, I me, mean, I don't belong to, to, to any of the political party, but uh, the people from the left, the vote divided. Some of them give the vote for the, our proposal and others rejected. So the, also there was uh, differences inside. Um, that process was very democratic because we have a referendum at the beginning. People, uh, uh, th there was a referendum that asked the people to to have a new constitution, I, and they accepted. Eighty percentage of the Chilean people accepted to change the constitution, and we have two referendums at the at the end of the process. They also the referendum asked. The, 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 the people to have uh, to, re, to accept it or reject it, and people reject it. That is not normal inside the uh, constitution, constitutional policy. Most of the time, there are just one referendum for constitution, but we have two. So um, that is the big uh, uh, process that we had, and I'm um, here 
uh, in order, if you want to make some question, so I will talk with my friends to, to, uh, to attend some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing your experience with all of us. So I was just thinking of having a conversation, maybe asking you maybe like three questions, and then we're going to um, give the floor to the audience. Please don't, re don't forget to submit your questions via slide, or you can use the, the uh, HQ code there. Um, so you began your presentation addressing the Mapuche cosmology and the role of women. <coughs> And uh, you also mentioned uh, how patriarchy uh, has been an obstacle uh, to advance women's rights in Chile. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the constitutional reform and the role and the dynamic between indigenous and non-indigenous women in that process? Yeah, it's interesting. It was very interesting for us because um, at the beginning, I feel that all of the women inside the referendum, inside the convention, all of us, we were feminist. Me, I'm declaring myself Mapuche, also feminist, um, but uh, I understand that not all the women inside one struggle share the same uh, values. And so we as Mapuche, uh, we can share uh, a lot of value with other women, with excluded women the solidarity uh, between us. Uh, also, uh, we also feel together as sisters. Solidarity is very important. But inside the convention, there are uh, different uh, kind of women. Some of them uh, doesn't um, recognize the nature as a mother, for instance. As indigenous, we recognize the nature as mother. Also, we recognize the, the feminine spirit of the nature. Water, uh, sea, mountain have a spirit, and that spirit uh, are connected with uh, Mapuche women. Also, is connected with men. So we feel that uh, uh, we claim for nature because it is a part of us. I belong to the nature, and nature also is inside of me. And that kind of uh, point uh, uh, view, uh, all the, the other women uh, don't have that uh, uh, world view. So I always work, uh, talk with the feminists, and I told them we need to be uh, powerful. Uh, you have to learn now the Mapuche people, women are powerful. And I told them why it's so important to defend the mountain, defend the water. Some of them I understand. The other uh, don't believe in that uh, point of view. So uh, we uh, make a, a course because uh, we included inside the constitution the right of women, the, 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 and for, for some of the Mapuche, the indigenous women, uh, indigenous women also share the Protestant church. And the right of the, the, the women, also, sometimes the Protestant church doesn't recognize it. So uh, we, we make uh, accords each other, and the non-Mapuche, non-indigenous women give us the vote to, to, for, the, for the recover the land, and we give the vote to them for include the feminist position inside the constitution. So it was very uh, interesting relationship between us. And women from the rights uh, parties, 
they don't talk about that, po the, 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 this view. They, they just are following uh, the ideology of the conservative uh, parties or, 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 but they don't follow uh, other world of, or world of view, just the Western way of thinking. Mm, thank you, thank you for that. So uh, in terms of the constitutional reform, as I was becoming more familiar and reading uh, about the process, I um, also learned that uh, many people in southern Chile, specifically many Mapuche, uh, rejected the process and even abstained themselves from voting. Can you talk a little bit about what, uh, what, happened, <laughs> what happened there? Uh, I, I think that uh, inside of our communities, inside the indigenous communities, we were colonized by Western way of thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and some of our brothers and sisters don't have the possibility to recover the Aboriginal way of thinking. I told you the world was uh, um, created by a woman, uh, uh, but not all the indigenous people know that. Some of them are very Christian, and, and they believe that uh, what the Christianity said about the creation of the world. So, um, also the, the Marxism, Marxism mm -hmm. uh, ideology doesn't include the nature as a, a alive uh, uh, existence. The ontology uh, is just is a Western ontology that recognizes uh, the only beings that exist in the world is the uh, humankind, not the nature. It's not a being, it's not a life. So that ontology also go again us, and there are some people that don't believe that the nature is alive. So. Uh, people that are follow the the uh, the um, radical uh, way of thinking uh, go against us because they they understand that we need uh, to to have a radical position in order to to fight uh, with the uh, with the opposition uh, but not to make agreement with them. So some of the indigenous leaders uh, also called to reject the new constitution uh, because they don't believe in a dialogue, mm. have other way of uh, struggle. Mm. Um, so now looking back, um, do you think there are um, things that could have been done differently? like to make the process more accessible to, to people maybe yeah. in the rural areas or? Yeah, uh, we need it. Uh, if we have uh, the opportunity to, to have a new process again, against, we, we will do it the thing better. We need a strong movement of indigenous and not indigenous, but we need to be strong uh, in order to change the mental, the, uh, to find other way of uh, share inside the society. Uh, what happened with us as indigenous people, we don't have uh, one political parties, for instance. We, we don't have a strong movement. We were working inside the convention, discuss, making the discussion inside uh, to guarantee the indigenous rights but some of us, our people was just looking at, uh, watching us, but they need, we need them to work in the territory, to inform what is going on, to, uh, to also to, to speak with the people uh, about our rights. And we don't have, in that point, we don't have uh, that opportunity to do that because we have a very small movement. Uh, on all, all the maybe uh, when I, when I when we started the process at the beginning, 
I was thinking that the people from the rights party, we will understand why, why we claim for plurinationality. And I started to, to, to talk with them, to explain them uh, what does it mean, but they don't want to, they didn't want to listen to me. On the contrary, they say that I belong to the terrorist movement. They use the terrorism, the military situation that are uh, inside the Mapuche territory um, in order to say that all the Mapuche are terrorists and you are terrorists too. Hmm. You have to claim for peace, they told me. I told them, I cannot do that because uh, we have the president. This is uh, the, con the convention, uh, we, we have one task to write the new constitution and other situation, uh, violence, uh, rural violence, uh, urban violence belong to the government. They have to do work with, manage with that, but they prefer to, to say that we are terrorists and we are going to divide Chile. So uh, that uh, the process need a good uh, campaign of communication using media, uh, and also it's a, it's, a, it's a topic of money, because the movement, we don't have money to, control, to, to put uh, information inside the radio, or all of the media was controlled by the, other, the rejection, the, the people that reject the, cons, the, the proposal. Hmm. So let me just go and address some of the questions. We've been getting a lot of questions on Slido, so I would like to uh, have you answer some of, address some of the, uh, the potential answers to some of these questions. One of them is, should the Chilean state give reparations to the Mapuche for the, for the occupation of the Araucanía, and if so, how? And how can the anti-Mapuche narrative change in Chile? The Chilean people are our neighbors, I receive a lot of Chilean in my classes. Uh, we, can, we are brothers and sisters between all of us. All of us need justice. I don't believe that Chilean people uh, uh, want to lift um, pollution for the new generation if they love the new generation. All of us, we need rights. All of us will need a good place, a healthy place, right for education. Uh, but what happened? We are manipulated by the people from the uh, high power that control the economy and the neoliberal system. And those are a few peoples, but have the control of all of the uh, situation inside the society. So we need to be clear, I think, because we are together and I believe that we have a common destiny. We, that common destiny is to give guarantee of rights to the new generation, to protect the nation. On the contrary, the, there is no possibility for the society. And we need to understand, all of us, we need to understand that point. Mm -hmm. After this experience, do you have faith that there is going to be a, a new constitution that is going to address the rights of nature and uh, plurinationalism in Chile? I think uh, we need more time, but it, this is our future. It's our future for the indigenous people because we are a reality. We are human like all of the people. We need our territory back, we need our language, we need our way of thinking, and we are not again the humankind. We are, uh, we, we want to, to, to share our way of thinking with all of the people. So the future will be for us. I believe that. In every history, people that are in, inside the struggle, they are doing that because they need other future. And this is our dream, still our dreams. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what about uh, Afro-descendants as well as migrants? Yeah. Uh, it's a point we guarantee the right for Afro-descendants, also migrants, uh, but um, there is no policy inside the Chilean country for the migrants today. Uh, it's a phenomenon, social phenomenon. The, there are people from different countries uh, go to Chile for have a good, better life, but uh, there is no policy for them. And the situation is very difficult in my country and in every country for the migrant. Um, unfortunately, uh, there are some migrants, because in my country, migrants, after uh, five years, they can vote. And they uh, reject, some of them reject too. <laughs> because they said, uh, the campaign said, uh, we are going to build a Chilezuela. They talk about the Chilezuela. <laughs> We never speak about uh, a model of society. We never speak about a socialist model of society. We are going, uh, we, we are clear that we will have the model of society changing inside, but not looking for a special model. Mm -hmm. But they put, they put that kind of uh, words in order to miss uh, understanding inside the people. So, um, but it's all also a process for the migrant people because they need to also to understand what is going on in our country too. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. We only have a few minutes left, um, but I want to ask you, after all of this, what is next for you? Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher inside the university. Uh, I'm, today I'm writing about uh, language and culture, uh, about our philosophy, the vision of a woman, Mapuche woman. Uh, I believe in, in that uh, job uh, because I, I feel that the people learn, have a lot to learn from the indigenous people. We need a, we need a um, way, different ways, how to teach our culture. Because uh, from the beginning, the conquerors, they said that we were uncivilized person, we, we, without God, barbaros, and they, they still keep that mentality, people in power keep that mentality. And we think that if we teach about history, about our culture, about our languages, things will be different. And I'm doing that, and I will continue doing that. But mm -hmm. well, let, me, let me add one more, just because <laughs> you talk about the role of language. Also, uh, can you talk a little bit about the role of Mapudungun in Chilean society? What is the... Uh... Yeah, uh, the Mapudungun is... Uh, um, we are close to two million persons, inhabitants, Mapuche. Uh, uh, the percentage of the Chilean population. And 10% of the people uh, speak the Mapudungun, the, my language. Um, my language is... Um, is not recognized. Uh, this is why also we recognize the plurilinguism as principle inside the new proposal of constitution. I believe that we need to learn more than one language in order to understand the other. We need to, to share our culture to understand the other. Um, and we have a very monocultural curriculum, uh, one language, also, only Spanish is a powerful language in my country, and they don't care about the indigenous language. It is not, um, uh, there is a program inside the school to teach um, the Mapudungun, but you need uh, resources to, to have good uh, teaching too. 
prepare teachers inside the university. Uh, the, and those poor, uh, program, uh, we don't have it. We didn't have that program, but today there is one program. This year will the Catholic University from uh, Temuco, from Hualmapu, create a new career to, to train a Mapuche teacher in Mapuche languages, language. So um, uh, we need those initiatives. My language is not um, a standard language. Uh, and so we need to planify the linguistically our languages to write the language, to develop new words, because we, we have a very powerful language inside the tradition, but if we want to use our language inside the non-traditional uh, culture, inside the school to speak about a technology, we don't have words. But uh, every word we can create new words. Uh, if we, we understand the grammar, the morphology of our language, we can do it that. Everywhere, every language have the academy that working in that point, and we don't have that academy too. But I think um, today there are a lot of people interested in the languages. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, some, of uh, some of us with doctoral degree uh, inside the university um, as Mapuche, so we, we are preparing ourselves to, to become uh, more um, with the culture, with the, with the, all of the things that need our culture in order to keep tradition inside the non-traditional world. Mm. Well, on that note, hermana, which I love, thank you so thank much you. for being here, and thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I was going to say, let's, and now I'm going to pass the word out to Dean Tomiko brown Egan. to close it out. Yes, thank and you. I want to say thank you again to Elisa and Emil uh, for joining us today and for sharing your words and your wisdom uh, and, and your work with us. And thanks to all of you for being here as well. It's been wonderful to see you, and I hope we'll see you again soon. You can go to our website and learn more about the activities at Radcliffe during the rest of the semester. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.